Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game from Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Wagen Z 2020. Round 11, a very important round because Magnus Carlsen was just half point behind Fabiano Caruana and uh, Magnus Carlsen actually drew his game against Jan Krzysztof Duda, so Fabiano Caruana can, you know, uh, get ahead much faster further than uh, before uh, and uh, if he wins this game that's gonna be a huge advantage for him and he gonna probably uh, win the tournament so that's something um, new for Caruana he never won vacancy tournament but Magnus Carlsen did it a couple of times so uh, without further ado let's introduce the players as black Fabiano Caruana the second ranking uh, player uh, in the world uh, at this moment his ranking is 2822 uh, and he is Italian American uh, player uh, for now playing for um, American team but before he uh, was playing for Italian as well if you want to know more about Fabiano there is the link and I explain more about him in another game won by him also very interesting game so uh, check it out uh, but uh, after this game of course and uh, at his opponent is a grandmaster from Belarus Vladislav Kovalyov uh, 2660 that's his ranking and last year in Vegan Z he won the challengers tournament uh, with easy so uh, now in masters he had the chance to play actually and uh, as I told you Fabiano Caruana is on the first place now but uh, Vladislav Kovalyov is in the uh, last place so who is the favorite uh, I think you can you know figure out who is the favorite of this game uh, but let's see what actually happened on the board we have e4 by Kovalyov and e5 knight f3 knight c6 and bishop on b5 so Rui Lopez on the board a6 bishop a4 Four, knight f6 and castle by white and this is pretty standard for Rui Lopez is Morphy defense and here black could go for the most popular options for example a bishop on e7 uh, and after rook on e1 and b5 bishop b3 d6 uh, c3 and uh, castle and h3 taking the, the the spot from the minor pieces uh, of black uh, this would be the the most common uh, position on the Rui Lopez uh, very well known thousands of times uh, played and as well uh, it is also the most boring as many players um, state that, that and, and or maybe commentators or uh, or even spectators there is also another uh, option more open like uh, knight takes on e4 and after d4 and b5 bishop b3 d5 we would have d takes on e5 and bishop e6 and this actually would be the open variation main line of the open variation open is always open there are no issues with the development so uh, that would be another approach but in this game we just have b5 which is also quite popular move bishop b3 pretty standard and here bishop c5 uh, still bishop b7 could be played but bishop c5 is uh, quite aggressive and it seems like Fabiano Caruana want to win this game and he played this uh, of course many times in his career already c3 by Kovalyov d6 pretty standard and now we have a4 a4 uh, it's slightly uncomfortable a move for black um, black of course can't stay with the rook here because after exchanging uh, after exchanging rook could take on a8 so have to do something about that and also um, taking it's not an option after after taking uh, white would have very nice placed uh, light square bishop which uh, would paralyze the 
the black position so uh, not really great rook b8 was played by caruana it's still pretty standard now we have d4 still the main line and bishop b6 we have a takes on b5 a takes on b5 and here knight a3 attacking this pawn and this pawn actually uh, is never saved uh, the castle is the main line and white takes on b5 uh, so white has advantage of one pawn but uh, the position of black is very active so now we have bishop on g4 but keep in mind that uh, this pawn is hanging uh, but of course it can't be taken because this bishop d5 and one of the knights gonna be picked so black would be the up the minor piece so that's not an option this is why bishop g4 first and here the main line and it's the main line for some reason would be bishop on c2 and now watch everything because it's quite important for the rest of the game bishop takes on f3 g takes on f3 and here knight h5 that would be the main line and after f4 and knight takes on f4 bishop takes of f4 and e takes on f4 queen g4 would be played and actually this was played many many times and usually white stay much better and win most of the games there are uh, some draws but a lot of wins by white so uh, this would be the main line how it should be actually played but here we have rook on e1 first by um, Kovalyov so uh, it's not uh, not the main line but still of course playable bishop on f3 was played uh, it takes on d4 that would be other line which was not play on the top level but uh, sometimes play also so e on d4 it could be playable for example c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and after knight takes on d4 and uh, bishop takes on d4 white would have to uh, white are you know the bishop is under attack this tactics is also uh, important in this game because it's nothing for free so bishop would take on f7 rook takes f7 and queen on d4 getting back the minor piece uh, bishop f3 now g takes on f3 and situation on the board is um, pretty okay for white uh, white stand slightly better have extra one pawn so uh, very comfortable and uh, for white uh, anand won in that situation uh, for example uh, in 2006 so the position is known and uh, not really uh, e takes on d4 is not really preferable for black this is why bishop takes on f3 uh, and queen takes on f3 uh, is not played often but let's see why it would be e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and after bishop takes on d4 we have attack on these two pieces so uh pretty uncomfortable so for example if knight takes on d4 then we would have knight takes on d4 attacking the queen but also attacking this is double attack on the on the bishop so bishop would have to be sacrificed on f7 and uh, white would have to play with uh, minor piece down so of course not really great so knight uh, so bishop can't be taken here but uh but bishop can play on a4 and actually after bishop on c5 uh the situation could be uh very complicated but still playable for white there is actually i see ex actually one game in database where white managed to win uh, but it wasn't on the on the top level and uh, it's not really preferable for uh, for white this is why mostly g takes on f3 is played so that was in that position knight h5 by black so very similar in very similar fashion and now uh, it's very important here now we have for example um, if we have um, this continuation f4 
uh, keep in mind that this bishop is not on c2 like before and it's uh, very important so we have knight on f4 now so in very similar fashion with uh, really it looks like slightly uh, slightly different slight deviation but actually it's not king h1 is recommended in this situation because this was played also many many times uh, for for example by uh, Peter Svidler, Vasily Ivanchuk, uh, Jan Nepomniesi so it's known variation it was played uh, many times for example queen on f6 and it looks like black stand uh, quite okay here rook g1 and uh, white would try to attack of course on the on the king side e takes on d4 that's the most common move here uh, interesting fact that Caruana play this also already bishop g5 what uh, was in that game queen e5 bishop d5 now attacking this um, this knight and interesting d takes on c3 so not moving the knight in a very passive position but trying to you know sacrifice the minor piece bishop c6 c takes on b2 rook b1 and now uh, the situation is favorable for white of course and uh, peter leco managed to win in that situation with Fabia fabiano caruana so definitely uh Fabiano knows everything about that position he definitely found another way to play so this king h1 would be really favorable in this position um, but f4 was played by Kovalyov so here we have knight on f4 very very similar situation bishop take on f4 e takes on f4 and now Kovalyov play king on h1 okay king on h1 uh, if he play queen on g4 like in the variation i show you before then we we have tactic by black bishop takes on d4 and now if knight takes on d4 and knight takes on d4 this bishop is under attack so bishop of course have to take on f7 and after uh, exchanging here c takes on d4 and uh, actually black now stand uh, much better uh, at least uh, can pick up one of the pawns and be advanced in the pawn but the end but the game is still not end it's still a lot to play uh, black stands just slightly better but it's totally different than situation with the bishop on c2 so that was very important move in this um, in this opening so uh, keep in mind like the slight differences in the opening way everybody is familiar already there is a huge advantage for the player who who understand this much much better so Fabiano Caruana has definitely much more experience here uh, king h1 was played instead because this uh, queen on g4 wouldn't work as well but here caruana managed to play fantastic move of course uh, uh, there is still some uh, some attacking chances for for white so black has to do something about that and black play knight on e7 so uh knight on e7 of course uh, next move gonna be knight on g6 defending this pawn but also uh but also protecting the open and the open g file from attack so uh white would have to uh, open the the king um, even more and spend a lot of moves uh, to construct any attack so probably that would um, fail bishop on c2 now and uh, yeah bishop is going to c2 and uh, of course for the same reason we had before because of these tactics uh, so that's not really great for white so bishop on c2 was played and knight on g6 um, as predicted that was not difficult to predict of course the plan could be uh, e5 and for example queen h5 
with some attacking chances on h7 but now this knight on g6 prevents from all of that now we have b4 uh, as the bishop moved to c2 b4 can be played to prevent uh, somehow at least try uh, this c5 move and here Caruana play a um, very nice maneuver first he kicked the knight from the active b5 square so uh, knight of course has to go to a3 and then c5 so that is th that's the huge difference and interesting that it's still better for white to go back on b5 this knight is much more active here so for example c takes on d4 c takes on d4 queen d7 attacking this knight but bishop a4 and there are no any nasty discoveries everything is fine but it's difficult to say uh who stands better by stockfish black stands better but there are a lot of uh possibilities for both sides to play queen can be uh, moved to h3 uh, also there are some tactics with this knight uh, but also uh, we have you know we have this some of these discoveries maybe maybe there would be some tactics if some more moves are done uh, so uh, situation would be very very complicated here b takes on c5 by Kovalyov and that was probably one of the first um, big inaccuracies maybe even mistake uh, d takes on c5 and now we have um, attack on the center of white on d4 we have three pieces attacking so uh, and only two pieces defending so uh, not really great for white white has to do something about that maybe could push but also uh, knight on c4 could be played and Kovalyov choose that option so he want to eliminate eliminate one of the attackers first so we have c takes on d4 knight takes on b6 rook takes on b6 and now c takes on d4 and rook d6 by Caruana now so pressure on the central d4 pawn uh, it's uh, very very strong and here the most the, the move which everybody would probably want to play is d5 d5 and after for example knight on e5 so black would just block the the advance and advancement of white f3 could be played so consolidate this chain but actually white can do anything more this bishop is very sad here this bishop can do anything on c2 it has to be remaneuvered so for example bishop on uh, we have f6 so for example uh, there are a couple of options can be very active and with some attacking chances on the uh, on the king side but also can play h6 and with attacks on the on the king side with the pawns first so uh, for example bishop on d3 remaneuvering of course black are not interested in exchanging this wonderful knight uh, for this um, passive bishop uh, queen f6 could be played bishop e2 and now g5 rook g1 of course not allowing this uh, g4 attack so king h7 rook a2 bringing the rook to the second rank so can defend the uh, g2 and h2 uh, squares and now black can actually pl play rook on c8 for example and already threatening to come uh, to the to the third rank and do some attacks so queen d4 could be played to prevent but then rook on b8 and still can uh, you know do the same so white would have to maneuver a lot and black would just probably over maneuver white uh, this is why uh, Kovalyov actually 
didn't want to have that fate. So he played rook on a4, defending this d4 pawn. But now we have knight e5, so bringing one more attacker, uh, because now this knight of course can't be taken, but this knight can be moved to c6 and attack the d4 pawn again. So we have f3 consolidating, so of course um, that is uh, okay move, and now knight c6 as planned, and now we have uh, and now we have three attackers here uh, on the d4. What to do now? Uh, the computer say actually d5 would be the best and but we would land with the same uh, option so for example queen on f6 of course the knight can't be taken rook g1 bringing the the rook to attack knight e5 and we would have very similar situation and um, that that's one that's one short lesson for everybody who uh, meet with the pawn chain like this pawn chain always can be blocked and if you and of course the the pawns are the best blockers but sometimes the pieces has to block so the best uh, pieces uh, for blocking are the pieces which are very elastic so for example they can do something uh, knights usually are great because they can attack and control a lot of uh, squares around. So very active piece and still can uh, cause a lot of threats. Uh, rook in this case, Rook is usually not a great um, blocker, but in this case, Rook can be moved and actually brought to, to attack on the G or, or H file. So also can be very dangerous here. And uh, yeah, that's the that's the probably mm, the best uh, idea for white, but it would be very difficult to play that against against black. Uh, so Kovalyov decided for e5, uh, e5 exchanging as many pawns as possible and try to draw this way. Uh, but now we have rook on d4, rook takes on d4, and th that's a little trap. For example, in if queen want to take on d4 uh, and exchange the queens, uh, then actually black would lose one more pawn because this uh, little tactic uh, after g6, uh, white would take on c6. So now there is no advantage for, for black and uh, probably white would have quite high chances to, uh, to draw that game. Uh, so of course Caruana takes by knight. Uh, and here bishop on e4 was played, and, uh, but it's difficult to say what play. Rook e4 looks very attractive, attacking the pawn and attacking the uh, the knight, but it, it just look attractive. For example, knight e6, exchanging the queens on d8, and now bishop b3, attacking the knight, uh, so removing the defender would give uh, access to the f f4 pawn, but now rook d4 could be played. And after, of course, rook d4 is, is not really great because knight d4, uh, bishop d5, uh, king f8, let's say king g2, uh, knight, let's say c2, just trying to fork, let's say. Uh, king f2, of course, knight b4, so bishop on c4, staying on this diagonal uh, as the king would not couldn't go for for this pawn that would be of course winning for black uh, but still king e7 and now there is another threat to just pick up this uh, this pawn on e5 so um e6 f takes on e6 and of course easy win for white so that was not an option so uh, for example rook would have to go on e2 first but after rook on d3 uh, bishop takes on e6, f takes on e6, and king g2, the situation is also in favor of black. Uh, very easy win, 
probably can pick up the, the this, this pawn uh, very easy this way. Uh, and uh, and white doesn't actually have any any counterplay. Uh, white are pawn down, and the situation is totally passive. So uh, it just looks so good, but the move is is really not not so great. So not rook on e4. This is why Kovalev play bishop on e4. And here we have queen on h4. So um, that was for a long time the threat. So now queen uh, materialized on h4. We have rook on g1. Of course, uh, queen can't take on d4 because the rook would hang. So rook on g1 first. Uh, but now we have rook on d8. So there are some, of course, some threats here. Uh, so queen moved to f1 from the harm way of the discovered attack. And here, very silent, very calm move, g6. White has nothing to do here. Rook g4 was played. So uh, Kovalev told, okay, I'm gonna lose this pawn on e5. So let's just take this pawn on, uh, on f4 instead. May maybe that's my chance. Uh, queen e7 was played, rook f4 as planned, and now queen takes on e5. Uh, this pawn, of course, uh, couldn't be defended. There was a uh, really great job done by this f4 pawn for whole of the game. And now we have rook on h4, like uh, rook was attacked, of course, so has to move somewhere. Knight e6, and knight e6, really great, um, great spot now for the for the knight and rook on h3 is played now knight f4 attacking that rook rook g3 and here rook d2 so exploiting the second rank now and in this position Kovalev just resigned he has uh, nothing to do here uh, let's just show you the threats so the threat the main threat would be of course attacking on h Two, but it can be attacked uh, from a couple of sides. Uh, but also uh, there is another threat. So if queen b1 is played and let's say defending from that threat, then king g7 first, just to don't give any 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 chances on the last rank. For now is uh, controlled by the queen, but but queen would be stuck to to guarding the b8. And as white has nothing to play then king g7 of course is um, the best move queen c1 let's say attacking this rook and still keeping an eye on b2 but then queen d4 and now these threats are too much for white this is the one threat so checkmate but this is another threat so uh, so both of them of course can't be defended uh, rook g1, let's say, trying to defend. So black, of course, uh, can go for uh, uh, checkmating ideas the easiest way, but uh, actually feel free to pause the video right now and try to find checkmate in three moves for black. While I enjoy my cup of tea. <sighs> okay, ready? So definitely almost everything wins for black. It's impossible to lose. But if you want to give a checkmate in three, actually rook sacrifice on h2 is the way to go. And now king goes on h2 and queen f2 check. And now, uh, of course, if the rook defends, then it's checkmate. And if king go to h1, then we have queen h4 checkmate. Uh, so that would be uh, pretty effective uh, with sacrifice. And uh, this is why after rook on d2, Vladislav Kovalev actually uh, resigned the game. So yeah, 
I hope you enjoy that video. If you like it, please press like. If you don't like it, press unlike. Feel free to do that. Leave the comment. It's very important for me if you like anything, if you have any suggestion, uh, because your comments help me to uh, grow the channel and I can, you know, have more energy and more time to uh, create another um, nice videos. And, uh, and yeah. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.